When it comes to Kenyans' history and independence, then Tom Boyer is one of the names which is familiar in this country located in the east, east of Africa. This is a short story of hero who once lived, loved, lead, cared, transformed, and was assassinated in the middle of his city and loved ones. This is Mboya. Tom Mboya. Well, it's, uh, it, uh, it is pretty obvious that um, the British and uh, Belgian governments have been very much involved in the uh, conspiracy in uh, the secession of Katanga. It uh, appears to us, uh, those of us who have gone on the contrary, the United Nations was invited to the Congo by the central government. This, the United Nations did not intervene until invited. And at present, they are acting in the Congo, firstly on the advice of the African states at the United Nations, and secondly, on the advice and in consultation and cooperation with the central government of the Congo. Our criticism has been that the United Nations have been restrained too much in its act actions in Katanga by world powers. That again includes Britain, Belgium, Tom Boyer Thomas Joseph Odium Bohm Boyer, the 15th of August 1930 to the 5th of July 1969, was a Kenyan trade unionist, educationist, pan-Africanist, author, independence activist, cabinet minister and one of the founding fathers of the Republic of Kenya. He spearheaded the negotiations for independence at the Lancaster House II conferences and was instrumental in the formation of Kenya's independence party, the Kenya African National Union Kanu, which he served as its first Secretary General. He laid the foundation for Kenya's capitalist and mixed economy policies at the height of the Cold War and set up several of the country's key labor institutions. Thomas Joseph Odiombo, namely, Tom Boyer was born in Kilimambogo in central Kenya, to Lenidus and Dijn Maslowa. They were low-income sisal farmers at those days. He studied at St. Mary's School at Yella, for A-level and later sat for a Cambridge School Certificate in 1946, at Holy Ghost College, later named Mangu High School. He attended Royal Sanitary Institute's Medical Training School for Sanitary Inspectors at Nairobi qualifying as an inspector in 1950. Assassination. He retained the portfolio as Minister for Economic Planning and Development until his death, at age of 38, when he was gunned down on 5 July 1969, on Government Road. Now Moy Avenue, Nairobi CBD after visiting Kani's pharmacy. Nahazan Isaac, namely Njengan Jaroj was convicted for the murder and later hanged. After his arrest, Njaroj asked, why don't you go after the big man? Who he meant by the big man? Was the late President Jomo Kenyatta and his Kayambu Mafia since Mboya was seen as a possible contender for the presidency. 
The mostly tribal elite around Kenyatta has been blamed for his death, which has never been subject of a judicial inquiry. Others blame supporters of Jaramogi Ojinga Odinga, who feared that Mboya was attracting too much support from members of the Luo tribe away from him. During Mboya's burial, a mass demonstration against the attendance of President Jomo Kenyatta led to a big skirmish, with two people shot dead. The demonstrators believed that Kenyatta was involved in the death of Mboya thus eliminating him as a threat to his political career, although this remains a disputed matter. Mboya left a wife and five children. He is buried in a mausoleum on Rusinga Island which was built in 1970. A street in Nairobi is named after him. Mboya's role in Kenya's politics and transformation is the subject of increasing interest especially with the prominence of American politician Barack Obama. Obama's father, Barack Obama, Sr., was a U.S.-educated Kenyan who benefited from Boyer's scholarship program in the 1960s. Truly the legacies of Mboya will forever be remembered by Kenyans and Africa as a whole, for he was a legend and a hero of his time. Kenya has its heroes and ritualized memorials, and some could be a result of public despair. This would be a consequence of daily bombardment of high-level misdeeds, clergy lost in spiritual wilderness, greed and seeming loss of sense of public service on the part of elected officials, judicial decisions that defy ordinary common sense and accusations and counter-accusations within the executive branch of government. They give an impression that all is not well and hence a feeling of desperation that finds hope in ritual memorialization of select heroes. Instead, the blame fell on a Bulgaria-trained activist Nahazan Jenga, the man later found guilty of pulling the trigger of the Smith Wesson revolver. Tom Boyer shouldn't be forgotten, but why, why should we forget this man, he is a hero, a freedom fighter and a leader. Truly there, is a lot to say in this story, but this is story, a short story of a great hero who once lived, loved, transformed and lead. And lead. The story. A short story.